Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This discussion will feature forage form and an update on shredlage, a new technology in producing corn silage. As far as introduction, processing corn silage is critical for milk production. We certainly know it can make a dramatic effect in terms of both milk yield performance and utilization of the nutrient. The goals for processing corn silage are fairly simple. One, we want an optimal particle size for normal rumen function. Second, we want the grain particle to be available for effective use both in the rumen and the lower digestive tract and hopefully thirdly improve fiber digestibility. Physically effective fiber can be measured uh, several different ways. Uh, here you can see five different methods that you can read at your leisure. Uh, certainly I like the first one. We need to have particles that are over three quarter of an inch and no longer than two inches. Uh, over three quarters of an inch because it forms the forage mat. Over two inches would lead to sorting. And this is a Wisconsin guideline. The other orange one is the rumination collars. And the work from Michigan State says we need about 450 minutes of rumination time, cut chewing time for healthy cows. Certainly you can see these other guidelines that come from other universities and on farm applications as well. This is a rototype shaker, uh, complements of Cumberland Valley. Uh, this is a unit that measures the starch availability in corn silage. It's a series of screens. You can see the top screen there is the 4.75 millimeter. So we're asking how much starch is on that screen, and you can see a piece of corn on that screen there versus on the other screens. And this tells us one answer to processing corn silage if we did a good job. Why is that important? Well, Randy Shaver did a summary of some research and said, if you have an adequate job and we can move up to excellent, and that will show you what those numbers look like, that's another two pounds more milk on a kernel processing score. That excellent is going to be over 70. Uh, you can see adequate would be 60, poor would be something probably less than 50. You lose five pounds of milk. So processing corn silage, especially the starch fraction, becomes very critical in terms of milk yield. So let's look at some data from Cumberland Valley that Ralph Ward provided to us. You can see from 2006, a poor job, for almost half the corn silage in 2006 using this technique was considered poor. You can see in 2013, that poorness drops down to about 13%. You can see as far as optimal, uh, about 36%. So certainly we have made great strides in improving corn silage processing here in, in the United States. We then got some data from Darlin Labs in the Midwest looking at 2013 data. Fairly large data set, 711 samples. Again, you can see that 10% uh, is considered optimal or certainly excellent. You can see the adequate, about 61% uh, of the samples in the blue bars, and then about 30% under-processed. And of course, as we looked at the Dr. Shaver's data, that difference between the brown bar and the green bar is about 4 pounds more milk. So there are some real opportunities to still get it right right here in 2013. So let's look at conventional kernel processing. Some people also call that plant processing. What is that going to look like and what are some of the guidelines? This data is from Illinois looking at plant processed corn silage at three quarter inch theoretical length of chop. So this is a physical form. We'd like to see five or 15 percent on the top box, somewhere it's over 50 percent in the middle box or second box, and then a combination of 30, 30 or five percent in the third and fourth box, or if you have the three box system, under 35 percent in the bottom box. So that's kind of our guidelines on the kernel processor. And again, the kernel processing score would be ideally over 70. Here is a picture of a sample from Illinois showing you uh, the processing. And you can see here, the, you can actually see the theoretical length of chop. So you go from this dimension, from this point to that point, or you go to this piece over, over, over to this end here. You can see by using the ruler, that is three quarters of an inch. So you can very quickly check to see if your unit actually is processing at the length that you really thought you had it set for. Notice there is no corn in this example either. Here's the middle box. Look at this. Nearly 70% in the middle box. Again, if you look carefully, you'll see one small uh, piece of corn here, another small piece of corn over there. So again, the corn no longer is in this, and you can see a nice particle size. This will contribute to the forage raft. And here's your bottom box, about 18%. And uh, again, you don't see much corn in here. And that's the good news. This corn averaged about 160 bushel and about 34% starch. So obviously, this starch should be very available to the dairy cow, both in the rumen and in the small intestine.
Well, then let's move next to Shredlage, and that's the whole focus of this uh, uh, module, and that is kernel processing. Let's look at the basic design. You can see over here on the right, these are the rollers. This is the plant processor, the kernel processor. Again, provided by Randy Shaver and the group from Wisconsin. Over here is your Shredlage. So you can see a total different pattern in terms of what this unit looks like in terms of how it's going to process the, the various, various feed coming through it. This uh, summarizes the, the technique or the biology of the shredlage unit. It longitudinally rips the forage apart, therefore it increases surface areas and it opens up the, the pith, if you wish, of the corn stalk itself. We're looking at chopping a bit longer, typically in that one and a quarter inch theoretical length of chop or 30 millimeters. We'll fine tune that number here in just a few minutes. The rind or the cigarette butts referred to is completely opened up and available for the cow and also helps packing. We really smash the corn kernels and that's very critical as you saw in some of the kernel processing score information and it's a much softer and fluffier type, type silage. These next couple PowerPoints come from uh, Randy Shaver and Kevin Shinners from the University of Wisconsin. You can see Shredlage out here on the left, and I think you can see that it does have a total different look to it over here. Again, you can see no corn kernels over here. Here's the kernel process, and now if you look carefully, you can see some corn pieces sitting in this one as well. Here is the float. Uh, the float simply means that if you take uh, handfuls of corn silage, put it in a bucket of water at the time of ensiling, the, the plant material floats, the corn goes to the bottom, and now you can see a d d d dramatic difference. This one did shake, uh, was rated at about a 70 kernel processing score in the shredlage. This one over here was sitting right around 60. So you can physically see a difference not only in the plant material, but the corn grain itself. Uh, Dr. Shaver then put it through the Penn State box, and you can see on the bottom the differences on the, the, over here. What's happened here with the shredlage unit, you have literally moved some of the second box, which has a very high number, up here to, a, to the top box. And so there is some suggestion this should help us in terms of rumination and cut chewing effect, and we'll be seeing more of that rumination collar information in the future coming to us. You'll notice that we have a fairly low level in the top box on this kernel processing unit uh, shakeout on this box. Next, Dr. Shaver fed this in a short-term feeding study, and you can see, uh, compare the kernel process, corn versus the shredlage, about a two-pound difference. And this probably reflects some of the starch dynamics that we saw in the previous slide uh, earlier. Notice there's really no difference in feed efficiency in terms of fat-corrected milk per unit of dry matter consumed or energy-corrected milk here, and so we just got actually two pounds more milk from the cows. Here are some guidelines in terms of costs on the shredlage unit. Uh, about, uh, and you can see the reference in the bottom coming from a farm magazine, about $30,000 for the unit. Uh, you may have to add some extra costs because of uh, fuel consumption. Again, uh, championed by some of the Michigan State people here. And there might be a slight increase in charge. But remember, if you get two to four pounds more milk per cow and you're feeding 50 pounds of corn side, you very quickly recover that. Uh, these rollers also wear out just like the kernel process rollers, and these are the guidelines in terms of replacing the rollers. What about density? Uh, this data comes from Chris Hansen Lab uh, here in uh, near Milwaukee, and uh, this looks at density. You can see that uh, the average of all these corn side samples taken in 2013 was about 18 and a half pounds of dry matter per cubic foot. That's a pretty good number. Now, every one that's got a red hue on the edge of it, this would be your processed uh, shredlage corn side. So you can see three samples up here in the high 20s, uh, another one here at 19, and you can see a couple of them down here as well. So certainly this product will pack well, and that's because we've ripped open uh, the rind of the plant and should ferment very, very well for us. Here are some guidelines that come from the company, uh, Shredlage. You can see it is copyrighted. And as the moisture of the, of the corn sides gets drier, you can see that we will chop it a bit shorter, allows for better compaction. And you can see we also crush the corn crop a little bit more uh, completely to make sure that it becomes available to the cow. If we look at the benefits of shredlage, there are really three things to take a look at. Uh, first of all, with the kernel processing score, you can see we get a much better process coming on the kernel itself. Uh, number two, you can see physically it looks different. It has a different function in the rumen of the animal. And over here, you can see a, an increase in terms of fiber digestibility. And those are really big factors in terms of getting the most feed value coming out of the corn product.
Another unit that some of us will see coming in 2014 comes from John Deere. They are calling theirs the Colonel Star. You can see that processor is based on convex, concave disks. Be available 2014. Again, the price slightly higher here and a little difference in terms of speed differential. We have no data on this, but uh, certainly we want our listeners to be aware of this unit coming on board as well. So what are the take-home messages? Regardless, if you're using Shredledge or Kernel Processor, we must get it right. Uh, there's just too much milk and too many opportunities on the table, so we have to be sure we get the job done correctly. Number two, starch fermentation and fiber digestibility must be optimized. And so certainly processing our corn silages will allow that. So processing definitely is in. And we have to get optimal packing of the corn silage to allow it to ferment and to maintain forage stability. So I think you'll see our processors being a adjusted as the corn hybrids and the corn crops changes in maturity and in terms of types of corn hybrids themselves. Well, come and visit us at YouTube. We have many more opportunities for you to listen to more of our modules there. We continue to offer our online classes. My thanks to Jim Baltz, our instructional design specialist, for putting this together for me. And thanks. Have a great day.